Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things, which thou knowest not. Jeremiah 33, 3. On my right hand is Reverend Kendall Hetrick from Last Adam Ministries down by Lomax. Mm -hmm. He comes all the way up here to help make programs for you people and me so we can grow in Jesus. I'm Reverend Bob Butler from Agape and Praise Fellowship. We've started this program under the auspices of God because I didn't want to do it. <laughs> In January of 1987, I wanted to minister one-on-one -on -one because I felt like that's where I should be. And God put us on TV. Uh, that's a whole story in itself, which is really amazing. And I asked Kendall way back then. I told him what was going on. I said, would you be willing to be my co-host on this session with this? The uh, God said, don't dress up in suits and be fancy and put on a professional air. He says, I want you to be just like the people that are watching you. So you don't see us dress up a suit and tie very often unless it's a real special occasion. Uh, right. We come in here and, and we want to be just like you because we want to talk to you and feed you the Word of God, things we've learned and grown from January 1987 to this program today, which... Uh, this series is going on and on. I think the longest series we ever made was when we went back through uh, what are you planting good seeds or weed seeds. And this one may mm -hmm. equal that before we're done. I don't know, but we'll see. We'll keep plugging along until uh, God says stop. Because he said this is an open-end discussion. Intimacy with Jesus is not one where you hit a place that you can say, okay, we're in conclusion now, we've, we've arrived, and that's that. That's uh, not one of those topics. Uh, everything we've talked about up to now uh, has been relevant to intimacy, even if we haven't mentioned it specifically. Okay. But this one uh, is one I think is critically important to us walking in victory, walking as Jesus walked in our lives on this earth, doing what he did, saying what he said, and blessing the people that need to have our presence. And it's learning how to recognize and live in a constant presence of Jesus and the Godhead. Now, that's quite a topic in itself. That's, and uh, I went to a couple of scripture references, Acts 4.13 and James 1.5. 1, 1, Acts 4.13 says, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled. And they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Mm -hmm. So when we're living in the presence of Jesus, and we know that we are, when people see us, they should say, and they have been with Jesus. Mm -hmm. They should recognize the fact of who we are, why we're doing what we're doing, and desire the same thing. Yeah. And James... Uh, one five. I got the wrong place. I got to go back to one five. If you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that give it to all men liberally and unbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like the wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For not let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Well, uh, we know that after we pursue Jesus, this intimacy thing we've been talking about, when we, when we pursue that and we know that we're on the right track, uh, it's just so rewarding to know that the presence of Jesus is there. Mm -hmm. That he's with us now. We may sense it as the, as the presence of the Holy Spirit, uh, but whether it be the Holy Spirit or Jesus himself, uh, it's it's a blessing and it's it, it's deeper than that because uh, when I wrote that down I went back to uh, one of our Bible discussions uh, we were talking about sensing the presence of spirit uh, or sp uh, the presence of Jesus in and spirit in some of the meetings we've been in and I know that you can relate to this where you just walk into that meeting and you just know that God's there mm -hmm. ready to manifest himself to the people who are ready to receive what, what he has for yeah. them. 
And, and so our discussion that night, we were talking about that very thing. Jesus said, I have glorified thee on earth. I have finished the work that thou gave to me. Here Jesus is talking to the Father. The whole chapter of John 17 is the Lord's Prayer. To walk in his attributes is a big thing for us to do today. Mm -hmm. And when we walk in his attributes, uh, it's the same as if God or Jesus himself was there manifesting his attributes by the power of the Holy Spirit through us. Mm -hmm. And and that is a huge step in knowing that we're walking in the current presence of Jesus. That uh, Now we know that, that God Almighty is, is omnipotent. He's, he's everywhere all the time. Mm -hmm. And that's a little different conception, preception, than what we're talking about here. We're talking about uh, a, a positive uh, physical sense uh, of a spiritual manifestation of the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of Jesus, actually, because they're God had the three in one. And uh, learning to walk in the presence of Jesus, uh, having the presence of God in us goes back to having his attributes manifesting through us, and we can have this. We should have this. The more that we do the the more that they do manifest, the more that people will see us more like Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that's what I had just said uh, in the preference here, that uh, we should be walking in the fruit of the Spirit, which, which is relevant. Uh, well, I said this one, one time somewhere, that the attributes of the Holy Spirit are the same attributes as Jesus, are also the same attributes of God the Father. Uh, if we look at the attributes of God the Father, God the Son, Holy Spirit, they're all going to tie together. They're all going to go, they're going to flow together. Mm -hmm. And we should have them flowing through us. Mm -hmm. and, if we're, and if we're dwelling in the presence of Jesus wherever we go, whatever we do, they will. Uh, Mary says there's some of the fruit of my wife, Mary. I love her. She's our director. She says that some of the fruit of the Spirit I need to work on. That uh, I'm, I'm not always too patient. <laughs> and sometimes the goodness is just a little bit short. Uh, so there's some areas that I, I need to work on that she sees in me that, that are not up to where they would be with Jesus. Uh, I'm sure that Jesus didn't have a patience problem. And he probably didn't have a goodness problem. Uh, I don't think he had any problem. <laughs> I don't think he did either. Uh, other than unbelief in the people that he <laughs> encountered. Well, that was a recognizing of their shortcomings. Yes. Uh, so this book that I've got in my hand, The Man Behind the Myth, Seeing Jesus as He Really Is, and I just lost my other marker. Uh -oh. uh, living in the Presence of Jesus. It's chapter 20. If you don't have this book, uh, go to the Christian bookstore and have them order it for you. Uh, this would do wonders for you to learning more about walking in the intimacy of Jesus because the, the contents here, uh, and we're going to get to part of this someday when, on my other note page, that, uh, of just all about Jesus. If we're going to be in with Jesus, we've got to know something about him. Mm -hmm. And this book uh, reveals an awful lot of that. It's, it's not... Uh, complete there's more to be learned than but this is a terrific start and if we could do that we'd be in tremendous uh, company living in the presence of Jesus and he goes on and talking about in one of the scripture references he uses is first Peter 2 24 about he on his own self bore sins on the mm -hmm. tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteous by whose stripes you were healed he's dealing with Jesus what Jesus did mm -hmm. and his attributes are the same thing that we should be doing and living in. And, and uh, we're going to be living in his presence if we are cognizant of the fact uh, of his attributes manifesting through us. It's, it's a recognition of our level of intimacy with Jesus and knowing that wherever we go, the presence of Jesus is going to be there with us. Now, you we, we've been in meetings, and I know you have, also, where the person up and up on top or leading the message says, well, we want to welcome the Holy Spirit to come and manifest himself here. 
And we, Mary and I look at each other and say, well, when we came in the door, the Holy Spirit came with us. Mm -hmm. uh, when all these other Christians came in the door, the Holy Spirit. So we don't have to invite him to come in because he's already here. Well, it's kind of like walking in the presence of Jesus when we go out and minister wherever. The presence of Jesus is there. The power of the Holy Spirit is there because they're in us. Mm -hmm. I, I think the problem really is more with us recognizing the presence mm -hmm. and the fact that they do live in us. Like I said in one of the other programs, it's kind of amazing. Uh, the, the creator of everything, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, lives in us because we're such small creatures compared to his mm -hmm. creation. Well, uh, I'm sure there's some kind of a uh, um, technical term for it, but we're bigger on the inside than we're on the outside. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know... Uh, I don't know if you'd be getting into quantum physics there or what, what you'd be getting into. Uh, uh, I'll leave that up to Stan. He gets into it a little bit and says, no, I don't understand this, but I've read about it some. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and brings in some things. But uh, um, the working of the Spirit is given to profit everybody. Absolutely. So, what we're... Paul wrote to the Corinthians, and he said, okay, here, here's, here's how he manifests. Uh, uh, one time he manifests this way, and another time he manifests yeah. this way. Talking about the gifts of the Spirit turned yeah. to the chapter. Uh, he said, you know, to one is given this, to one is given this, to one is given this. But the, the, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to profit everyone. That's right. And, and that's his desire to profit his creation, uh, especially in the realm of his people, but all of his creation, to profit his creation to the place where we can walk in in that newness of life that, that Christ gave us. gave us so that we can be that new being, mm -hmm. uh, a, a recreated spirit living in this body and and working on transforming it from the inside out from the inside out that's that's right uh, now he's got one chapter called the sweet presence of jesus now we can relate to that too uh mary had an experience well we were in a meeting together i'll say i'll go back to we went to a meeting together and uh, when we walked in the room where the meeting was going to be held uh, mary made a comment to me she says do you sense that sweet spirit that's here now she sensed it quicker and more than i did but she sensed she says it's a it's a sweet sense well it was it was the presence of jesus in that meeting before the meeting ever got started mm -hmm. he was in that room manifesting to different people that he was there mm -hmm. so the, his chapter on the sweet presence of jesus relates to, to similar situations like that where you get in a meeting and you just know that God's there because you sense the sweet presence of Jesus. Now, if you went in there and it smelled like dandelions or something, you'd say, hmm, devil must be here. <laughs> Confusion, strife. Uh, I hear again, the association of people uh, that are preparing a meeting. Yeah. Um, the prayer that's gone on beforehand. Before and during. Uh, the attitude of the people that are coming to it, uh, all these things can add to or take away from that kind of an atmosphere. That's right. Call it that's, that's what we. That's yeah. the way we can identify it. Mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, and and I want the people out there to know that this program is prayed about. Uh, I know that everybody that you and Jerry both uh, pray about are the people that watch this. I do, uh, even before and sometimes after, mm -hmm. and so, sometimes long time before. Uh, and I will confess that I pray in spirit over the people that watch this program because I don't know any other way to pray for them. Uh, anyhow, I'm just throwing that out because mm -hmm. I want them to know that we care about them. Uh, we're not doing this just to entertain ourselves. We're doing this for their purpose, mm -hmm. for their benefit. Uh, then, then he's got another chapter, three chapters here that every believer ought to really get a hold of. And the third one is pressing into Jesus. 
pressing into Jesus. In other words, what's that? What does that mean to to us? Uh, when we have when we have uh, situations arrive in our in our life, everybody does. That uh, we may not exactly know how we're going to handle some of this. Mm -hmm. uh, it may be such that it's beyond our education at that point in time. Maybe we haven't learned about uh, God's ways of dealing with it. Well, we can ask him. Mm -hmm. But sometimes uh, it, we can find out by pressing into Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, you know the answer to this. You, you lived here on this earth. You went through it as a human being. And, and you said in your word that there's been no attack or no challenge of the devil to you that hasn't happened to Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't gone through anything that the devil didn't try to do to Jesus. He's doing, trying to do to us. So we need to press into Jesus if we're not, if we're not confident where we're at in dealing with that situation. We can press into Jesus and, and, and get him involved with us to that. And, and that's what he's talking about in pressing into Jesus. It, it's not just knowing his presence, but, but Kind of, uh, well, let's let's take a perfect. Uh, let's let's just use us as an example. I say, Kendall, there's something you know that I need to know, and I'm going to keep bugging you until you help me with that situation. I'm going to keep pressing on you until you come back and say, "All right, all right, here's the answer, Bob. Now, this is what you need to do to solve that problem." That's a physical example of pressing into Jesus. Only Jesus is in the spirit realm. So we need to learn from our spirit man how to press into Jesus, his spirit, to get the spiritual answers, which will then manifest in the natural realm. And does that does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. Um, part of the reason for that is probably because the spirit realm is the real realm. Absolutely, um, absolutely. And if something is not, if something's not done or dealt with. In the spirit, uh, then it never will manifest itself in the in the natural world. It won't. Um, e even in the you know, uh, in God's creation, God is spirit, uh, but He had a desire for something light. He spoke it into existence. He said, "Light be," and light was. And uh, they tell us that it's still going. It hasn't stopped <laughs> no, since He, since still he said, said be. Um, um, and we, we tend to get uh, so caught up in the natural world, uh -huh. the world of, the, of, of our physical being, mm -hmm. um, because that's where we live. Right. Uh, and that's, for, uh, again, back to the association, that's where most of the people we associate with live. Um, that's what uh, we know the most about. Uh, unfortunately, even in church, we are, we are confronted with... with teaching or preaching that is bringing more consciousness of sin and and our fallings failings and failures mm -hmm. than of who we are in Christ and what we are capable of being That's right. what he has given what he's made available um, and and if i don't have some kind of a uh, image some kind of if something doesn't happen to create within me uh, a desire to press in uh, the woman with the issue of blood she'd heard mm -hmm. that Jesus was healing and, and, and doing good she said if I can if I can only get close enough to touch the hem of his garment that'll do it mm -hmm. you know now we don't know maybe that's all it took and I mean she may have been hearing testimony of other people that got close enough to him to touch him and were healed. I don't know because we, we, don't, we, don't we know, know that we've only got just a... Well, yeah. You know, uh, as, as somebody just said here recently, said, God can't deal with everything because look how thick the book is now. No. If, he, if he dealt with, a, you know, with everything, um, John, I believe, said if, if all that Jesus said and did was mm -hmm. recorded... Look yep. how big, the world wouldn't be big enough there. to contain him. And, of course... They didn't. They they had bigger type, and their books were bigger in those days. We, <laughs> okay, we, we, okay. we could compress it a little bit now, <laughs> okay. but uh, 
Uh, we or, got a linotype. <laughs> or, or do it electronically a little bit, you know. But uh, we, won't, we won't pursue anything uh, unless we know that, it, that we can get something. I, I mean, you know, we, we won't press in unless we realize that there's something there to press into and, and have a hope of receiving something. Because we're reward programmed. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, people go to work, they don't want to go to work because they want that paycheck on Friday. Or need it at least, yes. Or need it. But there's a motivation there's of a reward right. that, that, that gets them mm-hmm. going. It's the same thing in the spirit. If we get complacent Christians because they've lost their zeal for a reward. Mm-hmm. Well, I've got everything God's going to give me now, so I don't need to do it anymore. No, you haven't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you're not dwelling in the sweet presence of Jesus, and you're not pressing in. Yeah. Well, here again, when, when we, we were talking, we're dealing with sensing. And when we sense that presence, that anointing, when, when we get into that, that place where the, uh, where the warm oil flows, you know, mm-hmm. Psalm 133, just as the anointing oil was poured on Aaron and flowed down his beard, down onto his garment, down to the hem. When, and, and, and there's that sense, when, 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 we, when we experience God in a tangible way, mm-hmm. when we know it's there, that, that stirs, in me at least, that's what stirs that desire to press in. Right, you're right on. That's exactly oh, right. Oh man, I I I want that. Uh, we're talking about innocent. When 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 Jackie and I have uh, have time to actually be in the same room, the same house <laughs> to, to, <laughs> together, you know, we're not going off doing ninety nine other things. We have time to sit and, and talk, and, and and we 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 get over into that clicking area. I mean, you know, wow, wow you know, the unity sense that that unity sense when you say. This is the way that it's supposed to be. Yeah. It, it's it's a little bit well, when when you get back to that place where where you had the tingles and 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 you <laughs> you could sit and talk to one another for an hour or or and, and, uh, all night and and it just seemed like wow we, we've just been here when it was all that you could think about and all that you could you know uh, that's where that's what causes us to press in. That's what causes that that's what. Um, we become cognizant of his presence. His presence, and and and, and I, I, you know, I, I want it. Then again, uh, um, well, let me just t- go here to the 133rd Psalm. Just, While you're doing that, let, let me throw this out. You know, uh, well, I'm not going to. I'm not going to get you off the track. No, go that's ahead. right. I, but, um, yeah, the 133rd Psalm is talking about Behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together mm-hmm. in unity. Mm-hmm. Uh, l- l- let me just read it to you. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the shoulders and the skirts of his garment, as the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Now, now, there's a lot there in those three verses, mm-hmm. <laughs> but behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. When we get into that unity with Him, and, and we are, and and we are, and 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 when when we when we have the time, we take the time to spend the time, and and get in unity with Him, going the same direction, having the same plan, same purpose, you know. The Spirit manifesting to us several as we will for the good of all. Um, that is such a sweet place mm-hmm. that I want more of it. It's just like that bite of uh, whatever chocolate bar or, you know, <laughs> whatever. I mean, if it's a Hershey's or Snickers or whatever it is, that first bite, uh, you know, sends that sensation that you want another bite, you know, and. and Pretty quick, your candy bar is gone. Well, you know, you're talking about the oil. Uh, we've heard different testimonies, of different people. Sometimes, when uh, one one that comes to mind that that I can 
express is that this person was being prayed for with for the gift of the spirit for mm -hmm. for tongues a and they got the gift mm -hmm. and their their expression of the process they said well we started praying and, and what before it manifested they said it was it was like something warm like mm -hmm. hot honey or hot oil was being poured over me just dripping on through my being mm -hmm. well with me it was like somebody put a hot hand on top of my head but this was this was more like what you're talking about with the fresh and and it wasn't a physical thing mm -mm. but in the spirit they sensed that well there's other situations where that's happened where you know it's almost like it's in the natural mm -hmm. but if you look at the person it's not in the natural but yet the sense of the spirit was so overwhelming that it became real. And that's that it, that it bleeds over in the natural realm. It bleeds over, so your your natural body reacts right. to it. And, and a lot of times, my arms will get the goosebumps when the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit is manifesting, and it's a reaction of the of the Holy Spirit's moving. Uh, it isn't. You can't judge that by goosebumps. No. I mean, yeah. he's there, and he's going to do things, even if your body doesn't react at all. Mm -hmm. But it's nice when the presence of the Lord is such a way that it's you and even the, the odors you know mm -hmm. uh, there's there's different odors talked about in the Bible where that the Jesus smells like when he's there mm -hmm. uh, the lily of the valley for one and, and some of the others that, that one comes to mind but uh, when we get in the spirit realm and, and it's it's hard to identify it in the natural words the magnificence of it this is what he's talking about in a book when, when people say, well, I want to be in the presence of the Lord. Well, you are. Yeah. It's a matter of recognizing it, and, and the Lord will sometimes let something manifest to let you know mm -hmm. that he's there and he's manifesting himself. But that doesn't mean he isn't there because now Randy, this guy in the, our Thursday night deal, he says, I, I want to know that I'm walking in the presence all of my waking hours. Well, he needs to come to the realization in himself that God's always there mm -hmm. and he may not always sense in his natural world, the natural body, mm -hmm. the physical the reactions of his presence. Uh, we see different experiences throughout the Old Testament where God made his appearance and, and the flesh reacted. Well, they didn't have what we have. Mm -hmm. Remember when he told Moses, he says, you, you can't look at my glory because it will kill you. Well, we can because his glory is in us. Mm -hmm. So we're living in a whole different realm than what they did. And, and we can, but we need to train ourselves to recognize these things. And, and the attributes that God will use through us ministering to other people. And, and it's thrilling when he does that. I mean, I get when, when it happens with me, I get blessed as much as the person that's getting blessed. Oh, yeah. Uh, I had a person the other day who was talking about praying for somebody, and, and she said, I, I was praying for him and said, uh, said, I know it was right there, and they, they should have got it, and they, they didn't, and I, I didn't have time to go into all the ramifications Details, of that, but she said, it was just, you know, the, the sensation was, she said, I want that all the time, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, and uh, I know that she doesn't want to do what it takes to get that to have it yeah because, none of us do because very few of us are willing to pay that that's right price uh or, or and and or are even called to that place yeah. all the time well yeah because because the holy spirit manifests as he wills as he will not uh, as we desire it, we would we would love to have the switch you yeah. know but Thankfully, he's got the switch. He know he knows what he's doing. He knows you. He knows me. He knows Bob. He, he knows us in ways that we could only ever hope <laughs> yes. to know. And knowing everything that there is about me, knowing every shortcoming, every failure, uh, every every time that I should have done better and and didn't, he still loves me and he still comes through. Even the times you missed uh, it. it uh, the the time the the time that I haven't done what I'm supposed to have done, and he's still there and he's faithful. Yep. That that puts a uh, you know a conviction on me, and I haven't got time to tell a lot of the stories that I'd love to. But God loves you, and He wants to manifest, especially in these last days. He wants to manifest Himself 
in his church. And if you're not a part of the church, you need to become a part of the church, uh, which means you need to get born again. You need to begin to associate with like-minded believers so that you can receive God's riches and best for you.